Beautiful night here from Riverside, California. Welcome back to Riverside TV for another edition of the high school football game of the week. As we bring you to Ramona High School in Riverside, California for tonight's week four matchup between the Lions of Arlington and the Miller Rebels. I'm Nick Rice joined alongside Jeff Gorham. We are moments away from kickoff of what should be an exciting football game tonight, Miller and Arlington. Yeah, both teams pretty much equally matched. Talked to both coaches earlier this week. And new head coach Kevin Argamosa is a phenomenal guy who's been around. He's coached at Harupa Valley. He's been a, a lot of different places. But I'll tell you what, they he has them playing pretty good football. They're 0-3 right now, but they're scoring a lot of points. In fact, they put up 30 against a big eight school in Corona last week, and they lost 52-30, to but they are scoring some points. They put up 24 versus Lakeside, and had a tough one against Polly. But Coach Argamosa thinks that these guys are – are going to get better and better, and he's seen progression over the last three weeks. Certainly there'll be a challenge today against Miller High School. Arlington, as you can see, dressed up in the beautiful Trojan red uh, and yellow alongside the white and red for Miller High School. It should be a good one today, Jeff. A little warm here from Riverside, but an exciting matchup with two good football teams. A great Thursday night game. In fact, uh, this A.B. Miller team, A.B. Miller has been uh, was a phenomenal team in the 90s and late 80s out of Fontana. Right now they're 1-1. One one. They lost to Har uh, Harupa Hills 44-8 to in that first game of the season, and then they came back with a victory over their crosstown rival Bloomington as they won 41-8 last week. Arlington and Miller. We are underway here from Ramona High School. The kickoff is taken just short of the 10-yard line. Lopez brings it back to about the 32. He is dropped by Maloney, and A.B. Miller sets things up with good starting field position to begin the game. And we're going to look at that uh, Arlington team. Arlington is really, really uh, a young team. They really... Uh, just now kind of you know they're in the river valley league this year yep. which last year they were a sh uh, antiquated season they were not really a big part of it but this year they're going to be into it and i'll tell you what he thinks they're going to be uh, okay when they hit the river valley league number 12 for the rebels of ab miller high school is senior quarterback andrew ridge he notches the start as team captain for uh, miller and they'll go to the ground on the first play of the game that nets maybe a yard arlington as mentioned they made a coaching adjustment from Jeffrey Roney to Kevin Argumosa just over a month before the season began. So it is to be expected that they'd have some growing pains to begin the year. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to kind of get really going in a rhythm of, of your program and you don't really know your guy. So you're, you're kind of learning about your players on the fly, especially here in these first few weeks. You're going to have to fill some holes, and, and you're going to find guys that were surprisingly better than you thought they would be. Yeah. And Arlington, over the first three weeks of the campaign, seems to have been progressing every season. You were a former uh, coach yourself throughout numerous different stops here and beyond. What, what is it like getting acclimated? You know, it's tough, especially in a new program, just getting to know you know the new kids. And, you know, he's a first-time head coach as well. So Arkhamos is really going to have to, like I said, he's going to have a lot of question marks that he's going to have to answer here uh, in the five weeks prior to going into the River Valley League. A very tough league right now. It looks, you know, you got Hillcrest. Norda Vista has been powerful so far. And uh, Ramona has been the surprise of the River Valley League. So it's, it's a tough and daunting task for Arlington. But, you know, I do think that they can have a shot, you know, at, at La Sierra and Patriot. So there's some good, uh, a good mix for them to be successful here in his first uh, coaching stint here at Arlington. After a penalty on A.B. Miller, the Rebels face second and 15. As we are underway on the first drive of the game, Ridge is going deep. He finds his tight end at the 50-yard line. He is spun out of bounds by Clark. Big-time throw to begin the game by Ridge. Number 14, Luis Dominguez makes the grab. Well, it's nice when you have Ridge in the backfield. Only a freshman, <laughs> six foot one, just a stud. Great poise in the pocket, as we saw in that first pass. And a big target there in his tight end. And the sticks are moving. So they're going to test uh, Arlington's secondary here early. Yeah, it looked as though Arlington was ready for the run. And Ridge beat him over the top. Third play of the game. 
Miller off to a hot start. Draw to Mario Hayward. This is going nowhere fast. How often have you seen an 11-yard loss on a run like that, Jeff Gore? Hey, very, very <laughs> rarely. You know, and that's still the, you know, the, the early season jitters. They've only played uh, two games. They're one and one. So, yeah, you're going to have a lot of mistakes still early in the season. Yeah. The Miller Rebels are out of the Mountain Valley League. Arlington Lions for the 2021 season. A full season. As we had an abbreviated COVID shortened 2021 campaign for the spring. Arlington is out of the River Valley League for this year. Ridge loses the ball and recovers at the 37-yard line. It's a sack. So two huge losses. You talked about that. That's the early season mistakes. And a freshman quarterback kind of bump, fumbled the ball there. Well, for a drive that looks so promising to begin. They're back where they started. They're right back where they started. It seems uh, Hayward got a hip on that ball and jarred it out of there. Sack from Sammy Abdul, the senior nose guard. Third down and forever. Third and 30. Early movement. They may get about five yards back on a neutral zone encroachment. You know, I thought the Trojans were coming out tonight in these beautiful Arlington Lions uniforms. They do have those. See, I'm colorblind, though. Is, <laughs> oh, is that a true? You? Is that a true uh, USC color, though, is my question. I guess it would be. Burgundy? Maybe, maybe a little off. The red looks a little darker. This would be pretty impressive if Miller can convert a third down and 25. They do trickery. Tyler Jean Jaquez on the jet sweep gets a couple of yards back. Well, that drive was a nightmare to finish. A sack, a 11-yard run for loss. But they do get some positive gain here, setting up the punts. I like the trickery plays. A little, uh, little double reverse there, kind of. There's Miller head coach Andrew Amosa making his mark. Andrew Amosa, the head coach of Miller, uh, coached the Fox Sports Radio Hall of Fame Classic in Fontana, local prep all-star game back in 2020. This punt is reeled in on the fair catch at the 24-yard line. Arlington brings out their starting quarterback scheduled for tonight's game is Mitchell Wood, a senior signal caller for the Lions. There's a look at the lineup for Arlington High School for today's game. As mentioned from Jeff Gorham, they are scoring just over 20 points per game this season, and they hope that this go around they can have the sort of con ball control and the defense that helps them win a lot of these close football games they've had through three weeks. Maloney joins Mitchell Wood in the backfield, and he'll take off on the first play of the game for this Lions offense as a pickup of eight. So a nice, uh, nice gain there after a kind of a high snap. As we see here in the highlight, yeah, kind of a botch play. They just had to make something out of it, and that Mitchell Wood, young quarterback for Arlington, gets a good eight on the play there. Arlington High School is competing in the River Valley League, and, of course, you're very familiar with the River Valley. They still have the Ramonas in there, and they still have a lot of the regular schools, but Arlington is a part of this league over the last year or two. Completion to Jordan Clark, and a first down. Arlington coming out looking strong. Like I said, putting up some points, Put up, you know, and Coach Jeff Roney did a great job, but he just didn't have the athletes that we've seen in the past. But Coach Argamosa is really happy with the guys he has, and as we see on this play, another great run from Arlington. Christian Bozeman gallops for 11, and enough for a first down, maybe 10 on the play for Bozeman. So Arlington, as mentioned under Jeff Roney, made the playoffs in 2017 but towards the tail end of his coaching career, had a couple of losing seasons, which led to his departure. 
Whether or not um, Kevin Argumosa can fill his shoes remains to be seen. This pass is dropped from Wood. It'd feel pretty good for any coach to get their first win in a program, and tonight could be that night for him. That would be great, in fact. you know. But a lot of people are saying great things about this Arlington team. You know, I talked to head coach John Rice over at Riverside Poly High School, and he said he was pleasantly surprised, and and he said some great things about it. He said they play hard, they, they tackle well, and they play smart football. So those are high praises from yeah. a local legend here at, from Riverside Poly High School. High snap. Way over the head of Wood, who still is looking, and throws this one away. We have great field conditions tonight. That's the second snap, however, that's gone over a quarterback's head. Yeah, it's been, but I'll tell you what, maybe they're looking up at these lights. What a beautiful <laughs> night here in Riverside. Beautiful. Got the nice colors. It's just a little warm. It was about 103 degrees out here today. <laughs> I was melting. You know, it gets nighttime, and it's just the football weather. I mean, it could be a 1,000 outside. These athletes, I'm sure, are ready to play in a full football season this year. Nothing like it. I'm telling you, though, sitting up here, I'm going to start cramping. I'm going to I'm gonna have to drink pickle juice. You know, they, they they give you pickle juice for cramps. Did you know that? I did not know that. See, I know they give the thing. bananas. Uh, that's no. a good one. If you need a quick fix, you drink some pickle juice, my friend. Change your quarterback for Arlington, by the way. Dominic Johnson at wide receiver throws. And finds Jordan Clark. Interesting decision. You know, a good formula for the Cramps, too, is to attend the yearly Bug Week in the city of Riverside. All the different foods that they offer there. Well, bu do, do bugs give you, uh, uh, what is what is it uh, that you get from uh, bananas? Uh, so, potassium, it, right? Potassium, yeah. Potassium. Uh, they just taste good, that's all. Arlington's punting with Ryan Harder to send this one out of bounds. Well, you know what I like to do? You know those big June beetles that fly around? Yeah. Oh, those yeah. Big, those Familiar. big giant things? You know, I, I, when I see them, I like to surprise people because I, I learned this from Bug Week here at, okay. uh, on Riverside TV. Yep. Is I just grab it and I just eat them, eat them raw. Eat them raw? I eat them raw. going to get sick or anything? No way. No. Just, just chew on them. But like a good meal, if you get two or three of them a day, man, I'm telling you. Keeps the doctors away, you know? Yeah, it does something. <laughs> it does something. It does something to me, but hey, don't be scared of those June bugs. Just grab nope. them and eat them. There's plenty right here in our booth right now. Grab a June bug. Make sure to stick around throughout tonight's game. We'll give you updates on what's going on in the city of Riverside right here on Riverside TV. But, of course, high school football is going on as we have not one but two games seemingly every single week on Riverside TV. Stay tuned for all that's going on right here in the city of Riverside. Got a game Saturday. We got Riverside Poly versus Martin Luther King here at Ramona High School on a neutral site. Neutral site. Because they both play at King. So they, you they, know, if they just played at Ramona every week, I think I'd be okay with that. It's a great stadium. Great stadium. Mario Hayward, number 13, was on the run for A.B. Miller High School. For two teams that are scoring a lot of points this season, it is unusual that they go this far without any points. We'll see if they get something going. Fake to Hayward. And this run is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Arlington's Mokeni Vave, sophomore nose guard, was in the mix. Big, big line Arlington's got going on there. Greg and McDaniels, number yeah. 79. He looks like me out there. He's a stud. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Arlington, uh, their head coach, Kevin Argumosa, I'm sure it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get adjusted, but he was a former football player at uh, Pasadena College and led Los Altos High School and Hacienda Heights to two CIF title games as a defensive coordinator. His challenge at Arlington High School is going to have to be an L.A. coach trying to get acclimated to the different schools, the different players, and the different atmosphere here in Riverside. Exactly, exactly, that's for sure. But he, had, you know, he was he was with Rick Covington over at Harupa Valley as an assistant coach. He's been a number of different uh, places, but you know his his father was a military man buried up in the uh, 
Riverside National Cemetery. Oh, just a beautiful place. And uh, his wife works at Hoopa Valley, and so they've made this their home. And he said he found the perfect spot at Arlington High School. Got him a great teaching job, and the rest, they say, is history. It's history. This punt towers to about midfield, and it's taken right there at the 49-yard line on the fair catch. No score late in the first quarter here on Riverside TV. Nick Grice, Jeff Gorham. That's the other challenge about these high school fo uh, football coaches. They've got to teach something uh, throughout the day. It'd be, yeah, it's nice when you have a, a coach on campus. There are a few schools, though, not in Riverside, but there are schools, though, that will have a walk-on coach. And, and I'll tell you what, there's nothing more difficult than being a walk-on coach in high school because you, you don't get to see the kids on a daily basis at school. You don't get to know their teachers. If there's issues on campus, you know, you're not really there. So it's always great to have your head coach on campus a walk-on coach they have a lot of walk-on coaches walk-on coach okay had to get rid of that football maybe it was maybe it was under inflated oh <laughs> that is a big problem jeff gorm big problem raymond warhop senior cuts back to his left or i'm sorry mitchell wood it's a gain of about three on the play. He, they had me fooled on that play action. Yeah, Mitchell Wood, quick little moves. Didn't get much out of it, but he can show that he can run and get get out of the pocket. And if uh, these players want to play at RCC or other big-time uh, college programs, a quarterback that can do something like that is very valuable for a coaching staff. Second down and seven late in this first quarter. Wood throws the bubble screen, which is snuffed out right away by Luis Dominguez of A.B. Miller. Jordan Clark for a gain of three. Yeah, so quick hits there off the, our two friends, Gary Hedlund and Chris Chaddock are here. The coaches out in the former coach of head coach of La Sierra High School and Chris Chaddock, who is over at Indian Springs High School out in San Bernardino. They came up and said hello to us as they're here probably scouting some teams. Believe it or not, Jeff Gorham doesn't have any notes. He knows all of these guys. Wood on another bad snap. Loses about a dozen. A.B. Miller believes they have the ball. They're going to call it down. So that's down by contact. To here on the replay. That is the different thing uh, here in Riverside. Every coach in the city seems knows each other. John Rice is almost as familiar with Arlington High School as any other coach on the Arlington staff. That's just how much of a community it is around here. We know all these guys. And I had to learn that firsthand coming here. A little bit different in the city of Riverside. I'm glad you guys brought me in. I am the resident governor. This is, they already oh, have a governor. mayor, so I'm the governor of Riverside. Interesting. So it's my job to know everybody. It's my job to inv invite you to the, the uh, fraternity. workings of fraternities of Riverside. All right. There's another advanced. Not all that snap. good of a coach, but I think I could talk football a little bit. Just a little bit, though. Return from Dominguez. And he's still on his feet to about the 30, maybe 31 yard line. Both teams kind of feeling each other out still. Just no score. Playing in the middle of the field. See if somebody could strike here. That's something that doesn't happen all that often. Two different return men on a punt formation. But it seems like these coaches are pulling out all the stops. A lot of guys, <laughs> though, don't even put a, a guy back anymore on the punting situation. They'll just they'll just let, let somebody, you know, Norda Vista we saw earlier this year, they won't send anybody back. I don't know about that. Maybe that's why I'm not a coach. See, I'm, I'm for any time you can get an opportunity to possibly score points, you do it. <laughs> and... and a lot of guys are not under, on that same page. Mm -hmm. Maybe they saw too much of Kyle Williams back in the day, and that they had enough of that. Well, for two teams that came in with stories of some of the better offenses in the area, 
Neither has even entered field goal range so far in this first quarter. We saw a big play to begin the game. And after that long ball to Luis Dominguez, we've seen next to nothing for either offense. Let's see if Andrew Ridge and A.B. Miller can get something going. This is their third possession of the game. Rebels begin the drive at their own 35-yard line. Ridge fakes the handoff, finds Dominguez for his second catch, and he is nailed out of bounds by Arlington and Christian Barnett near a first down. Indeed, they move the chains. A lot of balls being thrown out here in the flat. And good connection from that freshman quarterback. Hanging out in the pocket and able to throw throw the football to the wide open man. Seems as though Andrew Ridge has found his favorite target. You know, there's no limit on how often you can target one guy. Dominguez has done a great job of getting open on this defense. First and 10 near midfield. Ridge looks to his left, and he's going deep. Overthrown. Great coverage of the outside by Christian Bozeman, who plays tailback and couples as a corner safety for this Arlington defense. You know, and, and we are going to see a lot of guys playing both ways, especially for a first-year head coach because, you know, he hasn't had an opportunity to see all these guys in action in game situations and a lot of teams didn't have scrimmages this year so it's basically learn on the fly so when you get in the ball game you got to make the best of it yeah if you can actually play continue playing ridge under duress right away spins and is taken down you wouldn't know that Arlington has so many two-way players up front on that defensive line as they came in as if it was the first play of the game. They look fresh, they look very motivated, and they make the big play on Ridge on that snap. Yeah, Freddie Carrillo, Coach Argamosa, talked about him on the coach's perspective on Tuesday and had some great things to say about Freddie Carrillo. End of the first quarter, Carrillo and that Arlington defense has pitched the shutout on A.B. Miller. The Rebels and the Lions. Second quarter is coming up next right here on Riverside TV. 12 minutes in, no score. That was the end of the first quarter already? That was quick. That was too quick. Quick football. <laughs> Let's have somebody score, though. This is like a hockey game so far or a soccer match. Yeah. Score, so, you know, it's a football club. I don't want to hear football. I want to hear a football team. Football. And I want to see b people scoring some, some touchdowns here. I'm with you. I'm with you. You call soccer. I sure do. Uh, you know, I have and a hard time. You know, no offense to people out there that love soccer. And soccer's cool, I guess. But I got to see them score. Yeah. They don't even move the sideline logos or anything. The football hashes, it's all there for soccer matches for quite a few high school and college games. Yeah, but, you know, and I don't, I'm, I'm going to get yelled at. Somebody's going to say something. But, you know, what I kind of equate soccer to is watching paint dry. <laughs> you For didn't me, say I have that. to have something fast. You I didn't gotta, say that. I have, to no. have, <laughs> I have to have something fast. You know, they have a whole do different uh, lingo, uh, too, with soccer, which is excruciating for non-soccer fans. I'm sure you watched some of the Olympics, however, this summer. I didn't watch soccer. Though. Oh, you didn't watch soccer? Oh, come oh, on. Okay. Come on, man. Come they on. didn't even make the Olympic team. The women got the bronze. Yes. That's they it. Sure the, did. Isn't that they got the they shouldn't have got the bronze. They were undefeated for like 84 straight matches or whatever it was. And the guys didn't even make the Olympics. Congrats to I'm drawing a blank on the name. A player last year from Pepperdine was on that US women's national team. Did you know her personally? Uh, sure didn't. And does that information <laughs> pertain to any bit of this game? Not at sure all. doesn't. Not at all. Sure doesn't. Uh, Hope best. you guys are enjoying yourselves. Comeback route. Knocked away by Bozeman. Two-way player intended on that left side for Isaiah Serrato. Or Stephen Thomas. Stephen Thomas. Number 11. Christian Bozeman broke that up. Nice yeah. uh, play there. Christian Bozeman, that name rings a bell that might be because he's been around as a starter for a while a great member of the program as a running back largely that's how he got himself known here on Riverside TV for Arlington over the years 
A.B. Miller uh, had a winning record in the last full season. That was in 2019. They went 6-4. and four. But they missed the playoffs. Um, it seems like every year the playoff format is changing in high school football. It's changed this year. Did it? You, do, you have, do you know about the change, Nick well, Rice? I appreciate you finishing my setup. Okay, <laughs> here we go. You haven't told me this. This is news to me. Okay, well, you know, in, in the past they've based it on divisions. Okay. Well, now they're going to base it on uh, straight rankings, one through – say 400 let's just okay. go with that we'll we'll talk here after the in between down so we can explain to our studio audience all right our so audience I the down say. is fourth and 11 a little late for the chains to get in the fourth down and the punts down at around the 23 yard line so what they're doing is they're going to rate the team so if you go one through 17 say will be division one okay and those will be all the open teams and based like the, the modern days, the Corona Centennials, the Trinity League, Big Eight schools. Sure. But it will go all the way down, and they're going to fill those those spots. So Division One will be the top 17 teams or 16 teams. The next one would be the uh, 16 through 32, say. Okay. And then vice versa as until they get down to however many divisions based on the rankings at the end of the year. So Interesting. You know, you and can that's have, where the computers get involved and, and, that's, and yeah, crunching and all the numbers. Exactly. Personally, while the computers aren't perfect, sometimes it does feel a lot better to have a team that earned it over a team that just played in the right division. Yes, yeah, and I think that's why they're doing it. Because, you know, last year, and, and the numbers of high school football, and I, and I talked to uh, the director of the CIF, and – what happens is that a lot of these teams are going aren't fielding freshmen and JV teams because there just aren't the numbers that we've seen in the past. Okay. So they're going to, you know, the the the, the good teams will st- will rise to the top, uh, and the not so good team, or I should say, the teams that will get in, uh, will be based on based based on who you play. So you're not going to have a Division One school playing a Division Thirteen school. I would say that might be a good idea. For a year. <laughs> and I think 13. for a couple of years, I think it's good until you get the numbers of high school football back. I mean, there's, you know, some teams are only fielding a varsity team. Some are fielding all three teams. So it's been kind of erratic this season. I think it will uh, continue for the next year or so. Well, Jeff Gorham, the governor of Riverside, knowing the ins and outs of what's going on at CIF football. Downfield, it's a wide open man, Arlington was a shoestring stop away from the score. And you watch on a replay, there was nobody near. Yes, on the throw from Mitchell Wood. Nathan Durant was yes, wide open. Nathan Durant. He was 15 yards by himself. The fact that he was able to shake off the sack on this play was just amazing. Mitchell Wood heaving it as far as he could. If he hit him in stride, that's a touchdown. For Durant's excellent stop from Sergio Lopez, number ten, to trip him up. They go to the ground and the Lions are in the end zone. It's a touchdown for the senior Raymond Warhop. Yeah, Warhop, good move, cut inside, great by the big boys up front to uh, to part the the, the ocean, <laughs> and he goes in for an easy score there. Great, great. Uh, set of downs here by Arlington. That Miller defense, it seemed you couldn't crack them in that first quarter. Arlington had one first down for the entire period, and then they come out in the second quarter. There must have been some speech from the Arlington coach, Kevin Argamosa, because they came out with quite the game plan on that drive and seven points. He missed that field goal. No, six extra points. Point. He missed it. Here's a look at that war hop run. He was barely touched. Fantastic blocking up front. The last into the secondary. And Matthew Maloney sprung him into the end zone. Matthew Maloney laid the hammer on that. Got to buy him a sandwich (laughs) for getting you that touchdown. Right after class tomorrow, of course. Oh, that's right. We got another day of school left. Uh, Exactly. 
Well, Arlington uh, scores first. The Lions, as mentioned, have slowly turned into quite the offense this season, and I'm sure Arlington knows if they can get the defense to sorts the way that it has over the previous years, this could be quite the challenge in the River Valley League for the schools in the Riverside area. We've got some good ones. We've already seen Ramona. We've seen Norta Vista. We have now seen Arlington. We've seen Hillcrest. We've seen almost darn all of them. We've seen all of them. We have La Sierra coming up next week, so after next week we'll have seen them all. Really? In the River Valley League, yes. Let's look at those River Valley League standings, shall we? This, of course, is non-league games, but currently Nota Vista and Ramona. Undefeated. Are undefeated at 2-0. and oh. Patriot and Hillcrest are at 2-1. and one. La Sierra 1-2. and two. La Sierra will play Canyon Springs on Riverside TV next week. Make sure to join us then. And then Arlington is searching for their first win on the young year. What a return to the outside. And Sergio Lopez is escorted out of bounds at the Arlington 49. We have, uh, you know, here in River City, Riverside, uh, our esteemed leader, Scott Brocious, you know, he goes out and he invites students from the local high schools to come out and shadow people. Yeah. They do the anything from the camera work to listen, sitting by me and you and I as we, if we were here. But they have a young man from Arlington named Christian who's helping out with the camera work today. So good job, Christian, and thank you to the CTE program over at Arlington High School. Well, I can't see, so Christian's helping me out, giving me an extra set of eyes here on Riverside TV. We have cameras everywhere. We don't miss anything here. They have a camera at your house, too, by the way. Oh, what? Yeah. It's the, the Nick Rice 24-hour channel. We just see what you do. Since you don't know anything about pop culture, nope. you do like Matthew McConaughey, I recall, and he's, he's possibly going to run for governor. You could be on his campaign. Yeah, I sure can. I mean, with just how much he's doing in the state of Texas, he's already the governor. I right? think you have a man crush on uh, Matthew <laughs> McConaughey. It's getting a little concerning. I'm a little, well, I, yeah, I mean, well, Clint Eastwood's going to distract me for a day with that Cry Macho movie coming out, so I'm pretty hyped about that. Okay, uh, Andrew Ridge. <laughs> Flag is thrown late downfield to Stephen Thomas, number 11. That's what are we going to talk about in today's game? Stay tuned to find out. Uh, you just said a Clint Eastwood movie, and I had nothing, knew nothing of it. <laughs> nothing. What's it called? Cry, Cry, Macho. Cry Macho, a Western. It's a Western. Yes. I love old uh, Clint Eastwood. You know, he's 158 years old. <laughs> They prop him up. They yeah. do. They just prop him up. They add extra wrinkles somehow. No, no. They just. You made me watch that one western. I already drawn a blank on the name. I try to. Have you have you to watched a Marvel the, movie yet? Have you, have, have you had a chance to watch any of the Avengers movies? I was rewatching Space Jam. You know, such a. Which Space Jam? The new one or the, the old one? The, the two, because I'm young. I'm oh no, the the new one's. Because I it's, just it's turned. just rotten. I'm oh, sorry. The, new. the Space Jam is rotten. Really? Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, it wasn't all that great. No, lie. the first one's way better. There's a real basketball player on the first one. That's true. <laughs> a short run here on a first and ten for A.B. Miller. Uh, it is Arlington in front 6 nothing. just as a reminder for those folks on Riverside TV. Sky Binion, what a good name there. He's... Yep, Scott Binion. Was, no, I'm sorry, that was not him. The Lions touchdown, just to be clear, Ryman Warhop, number 25. They have a stable of running backs at Arlington High School. No wonder why they scored 30 against a good Corona team last week. They have two running backs who both have played well in this first half. They have three receivers, all of which can start in a lot of different teams. They have quite a few great players out there on the offensive end. We'll see if A.B. Miller can respond. couple of yards on the inside run. Freddie Carrillo on that tackle for Arlington High School. So the Lions coming into today fresh off 52 points allowed against Corona. Looks like that defense uh, took Ironically, a short week, but they really learned a lot this week, and they came in ready to play. 
Yeah, it's a, it just that's just repetition and playing. These guys are getting opportunities, and when you play against really good teams like the Big Eight foes, you're going to get better. Yeah. Andrew Ridge gains a couple to the outside tackle from Christian Bozeman. How far away is Fontana from here? Just over that mountain. Oh, I just could, over that mountain. I could throw a football over that mountain, me and Uncle could Rico. You? Now, these two schools, as mentioned, are a Jeff Gorham football toss away from each other, but they have yet to play. This is the first ever meeting between the two schools that pass dropped by Luis Dominguez. Yeah, it's over in Fontana. It's kind of wedged between um, Kaiser High School, Fontana High School, and Miller. Interesting. They're all like a little cluster. and kind In of fact, this is, I believe, the Miller High School debut on Riverside TV. If I'm it not is. Mistaken. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh. The Rebels. <laughs> Midway through the second quarter, Nick Rice, Jeff Gorham. The Rebels of Miller High School out of Fontana, California, and Arlington. Ridge takes a shot into the end zone. And that is dropped. Jordan Clark was beaten, yet that throw sails right through the hands of Mario Hayward. It's incomplete. A.B. Miller's put together quite the drive, but Mario Hayward, on his first target of the quarter, dropped what would have been a touchdown. Tough break. Brings up a third and ten for A.B. Miller. Now this offense for the Rebels is also... Fresh off of a big performance, 41-8 win against Bloomington last week. So they come in at 1-1 one one on the year. Arlington Lions 6, and the A.B. Miller Rebels 0. Third and 10. Timeout Arlington. So we will be back again this week all for right. the big granddaddy of them all. It's, just, you know, it's, like, it's like USC versus UCLA. Notre Dame versus SC. You have Martin Luther King High School All right. versus Riverside Poly, the two teams that everybody in Riverside loves to yes. hate. They're going to play it out, and it's going to be a good one. It's going to be here at, uh, our, at, at Ramona High School. It will be Saturday night at 7 p.m. So it will be a good one. So we're going to continue covering Riverside football. In fact, we have RCC next Saturday, the yes. debut of the – National Championship Tigers. Yes. Before we get too far, though, can you explain to our audience what's the difference between a bear and a husky? A dog and a bear. That's that's right. That's right. That's right. I did not know that. You did not know what a husky <laughs> was? I thought it was like a wolf. Well, it's a dog. It's a dog? It's a big dog. Like a a, dog. Have you ever seen a husky? Do you have a dog? I do not have a okay, dog. Never. Oh, no. <laughs> you guys are not very not very nice. Yeah. Andrew Ridge going back to Hayward this time. The throw's a bit short. Coverage from Jordan Clark incomplete. She thought a husky was Huskies have those really like like ice colored eyeballs. And they're Oh, that's the and, Yeah, they're, that, you know, they're a good looking that's dog. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. I'll show you. Let me this up here. How do you not know what a husky is? <laughs> Uh, you're, how old are you again? You just happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Well, you know, um, I've been watching a lot of Riverside high school football, right? And this is a good-looking dog right there, right there. There it is. Yep, I knew it when you said it. That's the one you see on the TVs. Ridge stuffed after a couple of yards. That's a turnover on downs. But is that what they call it, the granddaddy of them all? Yeah, I'm Huskies calling it that. And if, if I call it that, it's you. the granddaddy of them all. It's the big game Saturday. Oh, yeah. Now, where is that going to be at? It's going to be right here. Right here, Ramona High School. Awesome. And and you know what you always say? What do I always where say? Is it? No, this is what you need to say. Where is it going to be? You never say where is it going to be at because you never end a sentence in a preposition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It will be here. Saturday it night. will be here. Ball and turf. Sure is. 
A.B. Miller thinks they have it. And the Rebels do scoop it up. Anthony Guerrero on the recovery. Well, the quarterback running back exchange, that time Raymond Warhop, number 25, it appeared he was the intended recipient of that ball. They lost it. It's a giveaway, and that is something that you teach every day like you do a lot of other things for high school football. All That's the fundamentals, the my friend. The fundamentals of, of football. Get on the ball when it hits the turf. Yes. And quarterback, running back exchange. We've seen some brilliant plays tonight from the Lions. This is pretty crushing for them. Lions give it right back up to the Rebels. A.B. Miller's in the red zone. And they'll go to the ground. A beautiful run to the inside. Taken down, Maloney converges for Arlington. That brings up a first and goal. What a run. On the inside, that's number 12, Andrew Ridge. With the handoff to Mario Hayward. So now Miller on the cusp here of yeah. possibly scoring. A.B. Miller searching to get back above 500. They are out of the Mountain Valley League. And their conference opener will start in a few weeks. Mario Hayward dances to the outside, but is stuffed inside the five. Yeah, picked up there. Like you said, Freddie Carrillo just picks him up right off the ground. Gets him, gets him quick. That's a textbook play. Spin off the Dominguez block, turn around, make the play right away. Open field tackle. That's textbook. It's almost a suplex. A suplex, nice. WWE style. Nice to be here on a Thursday night. Thursday night football. Absolutely. Hopefully it'll get under 100 by our next broadcast. That'll be nice. Here we can see you in a suit. That's not a bad sight. Else we'll see you in a suit. No. <laughs> It's a touchdown. Andrew Ridge, the senior quarterback, does it himself, and the Rebels have tied the game. Well, the Rebels got a huge break on that fumble inside the 20 from Warhop. It was a bad exchange. It leads to the turnover, and the Rebels have tied it with a chance to take the lead on what looks to be a potential two-point conversion try. Lions putting yep. everybody in the box here. How about see. that? Instead of one, they're going to go for two with the game tied. Deep back is Hayward out of the pistol. No receivers. This is a smash mouth formation, and Ridge will take it himself. He bounces off the first hit and goes backwards. Taken down to the nine, two-point conversion, unsuccessful. Number eight, Jordan Clark. A penalty here. After the play, it looks like it's going to be against Arlington. Let's see if they're – it'll be assessed after the kick, but it looks like it'll be a personal foul. Maybe he drew him down to the ground. But this is the Andrew Ridge touchdown. He got a great seal block at the inside off of the Sergio Lopez. Beautiful block to set up. Here's another look at it. The touchdown from Rich. Textbook. Number 40, Rodrigo Uribe also sprung him into the end zone. We're tied at six. Your old school football game where teams are going for two-pointers. I don't know if that was something back in the day you guys did instead of trying the PATs. No, you always had kickers. I'm yeah. telling you, the kickers are, are the most underutilized players in all of football. You got a good kicker? Man, I tell you what, I'm a big fan of the kicker. There are people too, believe it or not. Eh, kind of. A kicker is kind of a person. <laughs> but they're important in high school football. Yeah. But, but they're in usually today's soccer players. Game. They're usually soccer players. Yeah. Uh, but last week we had a kid from uh, North, never played football before. He's made two tackles in two weeks. The kicker. Very impressive. 
He's like the meanest guy on the, on the field. Is that a compliment to him, or is that? Oh, it was a compliment. I love oh, anytime okay. you can get a kicker in there. They got to get the rest of the team doing the taco drills with a kicker. Just phenomenal. We saw John W. North, who sits at number one in the city rankings, the Inland Sports Riverside City Rankings. This kickoff is in the end zone. That's a touchback. 5.29 to go here in the second quarter. Arlington and Miller are tied at six. The River Valley League, you said you've seen quite a few of those schools. Seen uh, them all. You've seen them all. Okay. I've seen them all. All of them. Uh, how do the Lions shake up? I think the Lions will do. Will be middle of the pack if we are uh, right. talking right now. And, and first year head coach, you got to be happy if you're Coach Argamosa. Uh, and really the first year in the River Valley League for Arlington last year kind of didn't count, I would have to say. <laughs> other, than, uh, It's nice to see the Lions in as the Jaguars of Harupa Valley went out. Do you know where they're playing now? I don't care where they're playing now. <laughs> Not in the River Valley, that's all. I think I believe they're in the Mountain Pass League, I believe. Interesting. There's a look at that previous play. Beautiful throw from Mitchell Wood. A slant. Nicholas Roman makes the grab. Tackle from Justin Fowle of A.B. Miller. Second and five. Wood looks comfortable and poised in the pocket right now. That's the Arlington quarterback. He throws a short bubble screen. That may have gone about 10 yards off his hands. Reeled in by Luke Rogers, and the Lions have a fresh set of downs with just over four and a half minutes left in this first half. Gain of 10. Well, pretty well played here, first half. Not a lot of scoring, but uh, they're definitely playing mistake-free football for the most part. Absolutely. Just one turnover from the Lions, but that did lead to the six points for the Rebels. Well, Arlington did have a winning campaign in what you said was a season that didn't count, the COVID-shortened 2020 year. The year before that, Arlington went 0-10, so the Lions... Had a rough 2019 go of it. And now with a new coach into the fold, Kevin Argumosa, this team, I mean, considering the fact that he joins the program, nearly intercepted, was that? They called it. It was yes, a catch. they sure did. Salazar was on the coverage. Ball tipped right off the hands, and he was really quick to get it. Intended for Rodgers, and that's... Indeed, is an interception. Tyler Jean Jaquez of A.B. Miller makes the play. It was a one-hand tip and a one-hand catch. How about that? And look at our camera crew. We've got four or five different angles. Oh, what a grab. <laughs> what a grab. Can that soccer player from J.W. North, can he do that too? No. Oh, okay. All right. If he could catch it with his feet, maybe. That's a good point. But... Arlington had a rough 2019. They turn it around with a strong 2020. And they bring in a new coach a month before the season. And what do you know? The Lions look very formidable uh, going into this year. Big hit on the run from Mario Hayward. And that is something that's really unprecedented because, especially in college, but high school too, usually it's almost impossible to judge a coach on the first year. Yeah, but, you know, you can tell if the teams are organized. And you, and you watch the sidelines. All the players are focused on what's going on. You know, a lot of high schools, sometimes you have that many guys. You, you watch them. They're, they're looking at the cheerleaders, waving to their parents. Yeah. These guys seem focused. They seem organized. And they seem to be a pretty cohesive uh, group right now. Jet sweep. Sergio Lopez has room to run. Out of bounds inside the Lions 15. Rebels after the slow start, giving up the touchdown to number 25, Raymond Warhop. They have really controlled the game, and the Rebels are in position to take the lead. And with that, Arlington wants a quick word. They'll call a timeout. Just under three minutes left, tied at six in this first half. Those are two touchdowns, not two field goals on the board. It's a baseball score. 6-6, six, six, bottom of the eighth. 
It's a soccer score. We're no, it's in, not. We're, That's we're not a soccer <laughs> score. Get out of here, Nick Rice. <laughs> I've never in my life seen a soccer score 6-6, six, six, <laughs> ever, unless you're going to watch uh, – Junior junior soccer and my or ice cream soccer that my son plays. YMCA. Yeah, yep. and they're scoring like twenty five a game. Mm-hmm. This is six six. Not, this isn't a soccer score. Oh, the, Knock the it off. <laughs> Knock it off. Indoor soccer. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna we're gonna cover a soccer match on Riverside TV. I'm sure at some point. Are we? We're gonna do it. Yeah, we did. We we covered uh, UC Riverside when they won their first Big West championship. And All right. they ended up playing Duke in the first round and lost, but still, we, we were there to cover it. We were there. Duke, I didn't know they had a soccer team. Well, you just learned it because I just told you. <laughs> Thank you, Governor of Riverside. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, 253 left in this first half. At the home of all Riverside high school sports, Ramona High School, you better know it. They're in the red zone. And they'll fake it to Lopez. Andrew Ridge with the handoff. This fresh off of the Gene Jaquez interception, Mario Hayward, number 13, puts the Rebels at around the 10-yard line. Mark them at about the 12. They have that, as you can see on the screen, they have that run-up lion just in case the Lions want to come out in the second half. And they may need the sort of second half mojo they had to begin the game. It's a Rebels touchdown, Mario Hayward. Yeah, nice move by Hayward to get in the end zone there. And the Rebels, after such a hot start to the game from the Lions, well, they've really gotten acclimated here in Riverside after that road trip from Fontana a slow first quarter but they've come out here in the second quarter with an offense that looks motivated and a defense that's forcing turnovers two in a row and these teams really seem to kind of are getting in a groove kind of in a rhythm and when that happens that's that's a momentum shifter here yes PAT is no good 12-6 we have seen two PATs missed today let's look at the big fellas up front that ab miller offensive line on the right tackle number 58 good block by eric morin a sophomore you don't have to be an upperclassman to start on an offense hey we saw a freshman quarterback last week i mean there's a lot of freshmen that are playing now because i had mentioned a lot of the freshman teams aren't fielding teams so it's a, a frost soft or JV team, but if you're good enough now, you, you just go straight up and play varsity football. Interesting. Excellent running, and the Rebels have taken a 12-6 to lead with 2.09 to go in the second quarter. We've seen Arlington go with some trickery here, and I can speak be, uh, in behalf of all of us that we're waiting Hopefully we see a little more of that in this two-minute drill for the Lions. I love trickery. Absolutely. Now, was there any other, just out of curiosity, uh, playoff rules that we should know about before we start league play in a couple of weeks? Not that I'm aware of. Nothing new new on the horizon, but there have been a lot of uh, games that have been postponed or canceled. Yes. And I learned today that there is a COVID list of teams if your team – as we go here, I'll tell you after the next play. All right, here's the return by, in a great run back, Pelagi, or I'm sorry, number 20, Parker Pasalakwa. Out to the 30. Yeah, but I was saying, that now there are lists like, say, North of this, this game was canceled for tomorrow. Um any other games that were canceled in CIF, they put their name into a, a pool, and you can call them and try to get a game within, you know, it's tough within 24 hours you try to get a game. Uh, some teams can field teams if it's if it's earlier in the week, but there is a uh, an opening if you do uh, have to forfeit or cancel your games, you can find other games on a CIF website. 
Change in quarterback again for Arlington. They have gone back and forth with Mitchell Wood and Dominic Johnson. They listed starting wide receiver for Arlington High School. Number 14, Dominic Johnson with the completion, his first of the game. Yeah, and if if they can't make up a game, usually you have a bye week, and it's early in the season, so later on down the line there's usually a bye week. But if you don't have that bye week, uh, most likely the game will be canceled because if you're playing a team and, and you try to make it up, you have to have the same bye week as that team. So that usually almost when never the, happens. Yeah, so <laughs> usually the games are canceled, and it'll be a nine- or eight-game season. Over the middle to Maloney, and away he goes to the 45. Matthew Maloney for the Lions first down of the throw from wide receiver Dominic Johnson. Nice. Yeah, and, and as far as it affecting the playoffs, I, from what I was told, it won't affect teams because it's based on the number of points you get. Like if you be, play, beat a team that's supposedly ranked higher than you, you'll get a 10-point differential. What they do is they'll zero out that game or give an average of what you've you have done during the season so you won't lose any really real rankings but they'll just average the number of points that you get per week based on the t uh, wins or losses there's a um, formula there so it shouldn't affect the playoffs unless you you know you get down to like five or six games rather than a 10 game schedule interesting dominic johnson to luke rogers on that play sergio lopez on the stop for ab miller and my only fascination with the playoffs, it seems every year the lower seed gets a home game in the first round because I'm sure they're anticipating the higher seed going on to the next round. It would be interesting to see uh, about how they figure out the home seeding and if they're just going to do top eight seeds, if it's a 16-team format at the home, or if they switch it up because that seems to be a common theme. <laughs> well, I think, they're, I think they'll go the higher seeds will get the home game. Okay. Uh, and then they'll do coin flips. Uh, based on the seating after that. Fair enough. <laughs> Wonderful sellout crowd here from Ramona High School. He pumps. Johnson goes deep over the head of Mitchell Wood, who is the typical receiver, and complete. Lions are switching out all positions, it seems, late in this first half. There's number five, Mitchell Wood. So the playoffs are right around the corner for a lot of these schools, less than two months from the start of the postseason. And while these games don't count in the league standings, all of a sudden now they mean a whole lot more. In 2019, league standings were really the big deal. You have to get in the top three for a lot of leagues. Not anymore. Well, the, the, there is a the situation where they will take the top three teams from the league, most likely yeah. if it's a winning record. Ultimately, winning is important. Johnson on the third down gains a couple out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Well, you can see the element that Dominic Johnson provides this Arlington offense, the sort of uh, movement inside the pocket which has to be a little frustrating for the offensive line, blocking for a guy like that and avoiding a holding penalty. Fourth down and eight, Johnson and the offense. Out of timeouts, they'll go for it here. Johnson's looking deep, and he is stopped. That might be the final Arlington play of the first half. Number 24 for A.B. Miller, Jesse Rasura. On the stop. I think if you're Miller here, I think you got to go try to put, try to get some points on here. We'll see what they try to lengthen the field here. Try to. Well, judging on how the first half has gone, they may not feel too compelled to try a long field goal. So this might be an attempt for the end zone. Go for it, go for it, and uh, I believe they. Arlington gets the ball in the second half. Arlington does get the ball in the second half. Good work, Jeff Gorham. But yeah, got to get, try to score quickly here. Let's see if they can get a couple plays as they. Yep, tail of two, receivers. absolutely. Tail of two different quarters. No offense in the first quarter for these schools. Plenty of it here in the second. A design run, Andrew Ridge slips a few tackles. 
And with 14 seconds left in the second quarter, A.B. Miller, it took them until 10 seconds, but they have burned their first timeout. That's a perplexing decision for them to take as long as they did. Yeah, I mean, if they're calling timeout, they're going for a score here. Let's see if we yeah. get some, maybe a trick play here. Get a couple plays here on the throw. Second, second down. Possibly get two more plays here. I'm excited you brought that up, RCC football, national champions. I mean, how often do you, are you able to cover a national champion? Oh, I'll tell you outside what. Outside of UC Riverside. But, but Tom Kraft is uh, crafting his way to a, a <laughs> oh, you know, you they're ranked second nationally uh, going into the season, preseason. And their first game was canceled. And, uh, and if you're wondering, uh, RCC, do they have great players beyond there? Uh, J.C. Jackson made the Pro Bowl as cornerback for the Patriots, and he went to RCC. Just want to throw that out there. That's right. Yes. But we're going to have a whole new team this year because, remember, they, they didn't play last year at all. Yeah. And a lot of those guys went on to four-year schools. Just wound up four-year schools. Quarterback went up to Nevada. Absolutely. They did put 15 seconds on the second quarter clock, and they won't test the distance of Andrew Ridge. Instead, he'll check it down. Complete to Tyler Jean Jaquez. He's got three names. He has three names on the roster. Maybe he has more than that. That's a, he's got a cool name. But with A.B. Miller up 12 to 6, they use the sideline. This might be the final offensive play. Maybe they have two up their sleeve in this first half. It's the Rebels up by six, looking for more. They're at the 45 of Arlington. Unless they have a Janikowski on their roster, they may not try a field goal from this distance. It'd be 62 yards. Ridge, with four seconds, dances to his left, and that will finish the first half. Number 42 for Arlington, James Moise with the sack. We oh. saw almost no offense, Jeff Gorman, the first half, and then all of a sudden these two quarterbacks looked a lot more comfortable. They did, and I'll tell you what, though. It's a pretty decent half from both teams. Arlington trying to get their first win in four games. A.V. Miller trying to get their second win in three games. And I'll tell you what, both teams got to be happy going into halftime. Uh, just, just down six points. Arlington will make some adjustments here. Coach Argamosa will see what they can do here in the second half. Rebels by six, two quarters in the books right here on Riverside TV. Second half is coming up next. My name is Melissa Olmos, and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the city of Riverside, and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookings, the residents call to the city to be serviced, and these items is large furniture, mattress, and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year, and these items, I put it in the back of the packer, and the packer crashes and compact these items so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream it was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residence houses, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I try to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD, road traffic accident with injuries. 
1234 Main Cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive Code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. first building of a little free pantry. We are building a little free pantry in our community. It will be one of the 26 throughout Riverside that will help fill the gaps of food scarcity here in Riverside. Data is telling us now that one in six families are hungry. It's about 44% of adults and about 50% of children uh, that are hungry here within uh, our own neighborhood, in our own backyard. Because of the pandemic, there's a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of families in need, and we hope that this will act as a bridge until families are able to get the food that they need. I think that there are always those times where uh, we are living paycheck to paycheck, and we need just a few cans of something to get us by. So these little pantries will serve in that capacity, and we're really excited to see something that will help families in need. And this has been a wonderful collaboration with the Riverside Mutual Aid Network, IEHP, here at Sandals Church, and the city of Riverside. So this has been a fantastic opportunity for community members to step up and to fill a real void in our city, which is food insecurity. So the idea is, is that if you, that one of these free little pantries in your neighborhood, you could stock it as frequently or as infrequently as you want to. And the idea behind it is that when people have extra food, it doesn't go to waste. These pantries are just kind of the first step, right, for reintroducing neighbors back to each other, getting folks involved in taking care of each other again, and just strengthening those community bonds that Riverside is so known for. Um, because things like food drives and food distributions, they're really good, but they only help folks in that moment of need. And we wanted to create something that would continue giving back 5, 10, 15 years from now, uh, and really allow the community to get back into taking care of each other. Um, instead of maybe relying on, you know, just government or nonprofit structures to kind of take care of them. If others want to follow suit, they can apply at riversideca.gov slash cares is an application, or they can email us at neighbor at riversideca.gov to receive an application to host a little free pantry in their neighborhood.
My name is Melissa Olmos, and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the city of Riverside, and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the bookings, the residents call to the city to be serviced, and these items is large furniture, mattress, and appliance. The residents, they have uh, two times a year, and these items, I put it in the back of the packer, and the packer crashes and compact these items so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residents' houses, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I try to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD, road traffic accident with injuries. In 1234 main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive code three every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you. first building of a little free pantry. We are building a little free pantry in our community. It will be one of the 26 throughout Riverside that will help fill the gaps of food scarcity here in Riverside. Data is telling us now that one in six families are hungry. It's about 44% of adults and about 50% of children uh, that are hungry here within uh, our, our own neighborhood, in our own backyard. Because of the pandemic, there's a lot of hunger out there. There's a lot of families in need, and we hope that this will act as a bridge until families are able to get the food that they need. I think that there are always those times where uh, we are living paycheck to paycheck, and we need just a few cans of something to get us by. So these little pantries will serve in that capacity, and we're really excited to see something that will help families in need. And this has been a wonderful collaboration with the Riverside Mutual Aid Network, IEHP, here at Sandals Church, and the city of Riverside. 
So this has been a fantastic opportunity for community members to step up and to fill a real void in our city, which is food insecurity. So the idea is, is that if you, that one of these free little pantries in your neighborhood, you could stock it as frequently or as infrequently as you want to. And the idea behind it is that when people have extra food, it doesn't go to waste. These pantries are just kind of the first step, right, for reintroducing neighbors back to each other, getting folks involved in taking care of each other again, and just strengthening those community bonds that Riverside is so known for. Um, because things like food drives and food distributions, they're really good, but they only help folks in that moment of need. And we wanted to create something that would continue giving back 5, 10, 15 years from now, uh, and really allow the community to get back into taking care of each other um, instead of maybe relying on, you know, just government or nonprofit structures to kind of take care of them. If others want to follow suit, they can apply at riversideca.gov slash cares is an application, or they can email us at neighbor at riversideca.gov to receive an application to host a little free pantry in their neighborhood. My name is Melissa Olmos and I'm a driver operator in the Department of Refuse for the City of Riverside and I've been doing this for four months already. I really enjoy it because this job is not like a routine, so every day is different. So I'm assigned to do the booking, the residents call to the city to be serviced and these items is large furniture, mattress and appliance. The residents they have uh, two times a year and these items I put it in the back of the packer and the packer crashes and compact this item so I can take it to the dump. Uh, my favorite part of the job is driving the truck. Since I was younger, I always, my dream it was to be a driver. And now that the city of Riverside gave me this opportunity, I really enjoy it. I'm really proud of what I do because when I go to the residents' houses, I see the faces, they're happy because we're picking up the items they don't want anymore. So I try to get in here because this is a better job for me with a better stability. And I want to too because I want to set a good example for my two daughters that I have. One of my hobbies that I have is go hiking. I like the outside activities like camping. And I also enjoy riding motorcycles. If I have to describe my job in one word, it will be perfect. Engine 1 AMR, respond with RPD for a traffic accident with injuries. In 1234 main cross of Columbia, two vehicles involved. Each year, the Riverside City Fire Department responds to 40,000 emergency calls. 431. And the men and women of the Riverside Police Department drive code 3 every day. We need your help so you know what to do when you see emergency vehicles. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. Pull to the right. So help us help you. We need you to pull to the right. We are proud of the Riverside Police Department's tradition of integrity, service, and excellence. RPD officers are disciplined, well-trained professionals who always lean forward to make our community safer and more livable. We are always looking for mature, educated men and women who want to apply their courage and judgment to serve the people of Riverside. If that's who you are, we want to talk to you.
Martin and A.B. Miller. Rebels lead through 24 minutes by a score of 12 to 6. Jeff, what were your thoughts of that first half? A pretty good one down the stretch. Well, I thought, uh, you know, Arlington really played pretty well, a pretty solid football for that first half. You know, Coach has only been there a short time. I mean, literally, like, if you say now, it's like 10 weeks. Yeah. But they looked organized, they looked focused, and they played mistake-free football for the most part. A couple uh, bad snaps here and there, but they played solid football as we watch here on the run. Nothing seemed to happen in that first quarter, but the Lions' Raymond Warhop capped off a very quick touchdown drive to put Arlington in front 7 to nothing. But then A.B. Miller controlled the final seven minutes of that quarter. Two very short drives off Lions turnovers. Here is the touchdown run out of quarterback Andrew Ridge in order to tie the game. The ensuing possession, just three plays into the drive, the Lions cough it up with this fantastic interception from the diving Tyler Jean Jaquez. And then they would capitalize after another Lions turnover with this, a 12-yard touchdown run courtesy of Mario Hayward. Let's look at this play and the fantastic blocking of the outside. I mentioned it down the stretch. Eric Morin, a sophomore tackle, joined by number 77, Raul Ayara, sprung loose the runner for the go-ahead score. And the Lions, after another couple drives in the last two minutes, couldn't do anything with it. We go into the break 12-6 in favor of A.B. Miller. Uh, did I miss anything? You did not. You were <laughs> fantastic, right, cool. Nick Rice. All right, sounds good. So our score is 12-6, to A.B. Miller. We have seen in this first half the Lions put out two quarterbacks. We'll see which one they come out with in the third quarter, but it seems as though the starter, Mitchell Wood, uh, that was the guy who orchestrated the scoring drive. He was the one that looked good to begin the game, but they moved him to wide receiver, which was an interesting move. Well, yeah, when you have athletes that can play multiple spots, you know, di different situations, different scenarios, you might have a better, uh, more athletic quarterback, uh, and then the other, you might have a guy who can throw a little more. So you, yeah. it's, it's nice to have a two-headed monster when you can play two guys. That was Dominic Johnson and Mitchell Wood. Arlington will return the opening kickoff of the second half. Both schools have missed the PAT, and the Rebels couldn't convert a two-point conversion. So that's how we have hit our 12-6 score. And they will be kicking off to begin the final 24 minutes. Glad you're with us. A.B. Miller out of Fontana. Arlington from Riverside on Riverside TV. And the Thursday night football match game, whatever you call it, Arlington and A.B. Miller. Just about ready to get the second half started. Run up from Tyrone Freeman. And this line drive begins the third quarter on a hop to Parker Pasalqua. He's at the 20 and is upended just short of the 30-yard line. Parker Pasalqua, sophomore return man, sets up Arlington, and it appears their quarterback well, let's see here. They're going into a huddle here first, but it appears Mitchell Wood is going to come out as the signal caller for the third quarter opening drive. Number five, Mitchell Wood. Both Dominic Johnson and Mitchell Wood had their moments, but the Lions did commit two turnovers, and the biggest problem of that, uh, Jeff, was that the turnovers were inside their own 30 on both occasions. That's exactly what happened there in that first half. Let's see if they can clean up the offensive side of the football here. And for Arlington, they came in scoring over 20 points per game. They've got six with two quarters to go. Wood on the outside run gains maybe two. Let's look at that instant replay i'm sure mitchell wood heard us talk about the running ability of dominic johnson wood's a pretty solid athlete too yeah and guerrero i believe gets anthony guerrero yes great tackle right. so this definitely happens in college and in the nfl but in high school there also seems to be a lack of that contact during the spring for practices uh, another high snap Luckily for the Lions, there wasn't a turnover there. So the preseason is almost an opportunity for these guys to finally hit somebody. No, that's an A.B. Miller recovery. Yeah, they're saying it, uh, that A.B. Miller got on the ball. Yeah, initially it was a signal to Arlington. Matapula 
Paole Moana recovers, number 66. Yeah, that's the about the third turnover base just on the high snap in the shotgun, maybe go underneath center there because they are having some all kinds of problems from center to quarterback. Yes, uh, they may want to consider the, the under center formation for uh, the quarterback moving forward. Another fumble inside their own 30-yard line. We have seen three turnovers in the game for Arlington, two fumbles at an interception to Tyler Jean Jaquez. Jet sweep, Sergio Lopez is spun out of bounds in front of Matthew Maloney inside the red zone. They'll mark him down at around the 13. A.B. Miller, after the slow start, this offense has really found its groove against this Lions club. Yeah, they've been uh, pretty good getting on the outside, running, you know, passes in the flat, going running outside. They've got some breakaway speed as they've got three receivers down, down below here. Let's see if they go to the air. They'll throw it on the right side. Andrew Ridge, the A.B. Miller quarterback. Senior signal caller finds this man, Luis Dominguez, for his fourth grab of the game. And near a first down. Just quick passes, nothing nothing fancy. But they're getting yards out of it. So you got to be happy if you're A.B. Miller here, looking two down ter territory. Yes, tackle by Christian Bozeman. They will remove the chains first and goal for A.B. Miller at the four. This is a big moment for the Lions in an effort to make the stand on defense. We'll see if they can do it. And the jet sweep is a touchdown for A.B. Miller, who have added to their lead with under 10 to go in the third quarter. Tyler Jean Jaquez, who had the critical interception, which sparked the go-ahead touchdown drive, helped spark another scoring march to begin the third quarter on the four-yard run. So, yeah, very, very good run by the back there for the touchdown. Well, it's really been a blast here at Ramona High School. Uh, just an incredible crowd. And, Jeff, were they taking pictures of you just now? They're, they might be. Uh, I think they were taking a picture of you, Jeff. No. Um, there has to be at least 1,000 people here in the stands. A lot of people, and there's a penalty on the point after attempt. It will be assessed probably after the kickoff. Let's see what they're going to call. I think I might have a fan interaction after the game. So as we're underway in the third quarter, A.B. Miller leads by two scores. And for the Lions, they had that fantastic scoring drive. But essentially the entire game has been, of course, the turnovers. But they just can't seem to get much going in the passing game. We'll see if they can spark something here in this third quarter. Down. The, the biggest problem is they've got to be able to handle the ball off center. Yeah. And not turn the ball over. That's, a, you know, that's an early season mistakes you're going to get and you know what you're running a brand new system under a new head coach new players hopefully they can shore that up before they hit the river valley league play 19 to 6 the ab miller rebels and for the rebels i mean with the way that they played here on riverside tv this might be uh, not be the last time that we see them on Riverside TV. I'm sure they were jazzed to play Riverside School and be on national television. And they look ready to go. The pressure and the Thursday night lights weren't too much for them. Not, not too much. They don't have a whole lot of fans, so they're all watching <laughs> us at home. Absolutely. They're on the top of your screen. I'm sure they're all integrated on the home half of Ramona High School's beautiful stadium. Might we have a lightning delay? I, I don't sure know if we hope ever not. ever had that on Riverside. Oh, Sites. yes, we have. Oh, we did. Yes, we did. We were here at Ramona High School a couple of years ago, and I would have to ask the guys in the truck, but it rained harder than I'd ever seen it. And there was lightning. The, yeah, the game was canceled. They, we covered. We had to get our cameras out of here. There was water coming in the booth. It was, it was a pretty wow. incredible game. It was it was cold. We hopped in the in the truck and, and ran out. 
Well, so are the players. They're going to run out of the field. So yeah, a little lightning on a at the end of this summer. Now, one thing that does amaze me. Okay, they're not running out. Just a penalty here. So, uh, one thing that does amaze me is every day I get notice of a flash flood warning. It's coming. It's coming here to uh, the Inland Empire. I have never seen a flash flood. Exactly. But they do lightning, happen. Lightning definitely happens around here every now and then uh, during the summer. It was a little, a little warm today. But not too bad, right, Jeff Gorm? No, no, it was terrible. What are you talking about? It wasn't too warm. <laughs> was, you, you just said it wasn't too warm. Yeah, it was It was rotten. It was hot. Rotten. Yeah, we're dressed up in short sleeves right now. Well, that lightning delay lasted, what, like five seconds? And here we go. Return to near midfield for the Lions, Luke Rogers. Well, Arlington had a, a moment in the second and third quarter where they couldn't seem to get much going in field position. This is their opportunity. The ball spotted just short of midfield with 9.46 to play in the third quarter of a two-score football game. Crowd is on its feet, including some Dak Prescott and Cowboys fans in attendance tonight. For the best football game in the nation on Thursday night, right it's, here. It's right here. It's not it's not the NFL. Rivals and Lions, 19 to 6. Johnson hands. And that runs going nowhere. The Arlington Lions will continue their non-conference schedule next week. They have a bye, and then they'll take on Canyon Springs. So we'll be able to see Canyon Springs a week from now and see how they fare against another Riverside school, That's right. uh, La Sierra. La Sierra, Canyon yep. Springs. We have yet to see La Sierra on Riverside TV this season. I'm sure it won't be the last. A.B. Miller has scored the game's last 19 points. Second down and 10. Speed option, and the man who scored the only points of the football game for Arlington, Raymond Warhop, was on the toss from Dominic Johnson. Seven-yard game. Nice little play there by the... Third and three is upcoming. That has been the first time we have seen them orchestrate the jet sweep. There could be more of that as Arlington started the third quarter with Mitchell Wood, but they have his backup, Dominic Johnson, in the game. Gut run to Christian Bozeman. A three-yard game for the first down, and then a whole lot more. What a run. It's a 14-yard gallop off of the left guard for Bozeman and a third down conversion for the Lions. They've come out with an excellent start to this drive. Nathan Durant and Jordan Clark line up on the left side at wide receiver with Matthew Maloney and Luke Rogers to the right. Four receivers in the game. Timeout. Yeah, we've had, we're going to have 25 games. 25. 25 games and... That includes five games at RCC this year. We Before the playoffs. We mentioned that uh, RCC was the national champions. You and I called the, the called those games. Yes. That was fun. We should have got a ring. We didn't get a ring, did we? We did not. Uh, it's because, you know, they, they, they're they going to give us two rings this year. That's why. Is that um, why? Yes. Yes, I was told as the um, as the assistant governor of the city of Riverside. Wait. So, um they, they did play the state championship up there in Northern California in 2019. 2020 season canceled. So now we go into 2021, and if the rotation is the way that it's supposed to be, there is a school that could earn. It depends on what school. There's, there's some sort of system, whether it's a coin toss or whether you know there's a meeting to determine what school hosts the state championship game in junior college. We'll have to wait and see where the state championship's held in 2021. Stay tuned on Riverside TV. Johnson finds Matthew Maloney. Touchdown, Lions. Great play. Right up the middle of the field, Maloney was wide open. Threw right in the middle of that mid-secondary. 
of A.B. Miller. So great play by Arlington. Well, this is, I'm sure, the sort of play that makes you nuts as a coach. A.B. Miller covers 1 through 11 as well as you can in a football game in the second quarter and in the third quarter. Then all of a sudden it seemed like the players didn't know off of a timeout. They didn't know who to cover, and Maloney was open by five yards. Adjustments made by Arlington and the coaching staff. Great Absolutely. Job. We have seen one PAT missed by the Lions. Not this time. Kick is good, and it's a six-point football game. Here's a look at the excellent seam route run from Maloney and a fine catch behind his back over the knees, and it's a touchdown. Matthew Maloney, number six. And Dominic Johnson made that throw. Rough first half. He comes out in the third quarter and guides a touchdown drive for the Lions. Well, great game. Close game here at Harlington looking for their first win of the season. And that's going to be a moment that those guys are going to relish, and I'm sure keeping their uh, keeping their memory bag and for the rest of their high school days. Showcase on national television. It's a touchdown. I threw Dominic Johnson to Matthew Maloney. Pretty cool moment for Arlington to get back into the game, and we'll see if the Lions can mount the comeback here in the third quarter, down six. Nineteen thirteen Rebels. For those of you just joining us, A.B. Miller makes its Riverside TV debut in 2021 as they take on the Lions of Arlington High School and came out with a fantastic game plan, forcing three turnovers by Arlington. They jump out 19-6, but then Johnson leads the scoring drive. And half of this crowd here in the home section at Ramona High School hasn't sat down since the opening kickoff. Great student section here by Arlington. And uh, the student section taking pictures of us, that's a first. Take pictures of you. <laughs> I'm an old man. Nobody wants my picture. <laughs> Jeff, you're not a day over 40, okay? Hey, thank you. And there's the return out to just short of the 35-yard line. Kevin Argumosa, the head coach of Arlington High School, led Los Altos to two CIF title games as a defensive coordinator. We'll see if he can guide this club to a title as a head coach. A whole different ball game, and a lot of coaches, I'm sure, learn that adjustment pretty early. A coordinator, you're learning one side of the ball. A head coach, you're dealing with personalities. Uh, you are checking weekly progress reports. Well, my coaches did when I was playing high school. Of course. Yeah. Watching film, got to do it all. Yes. First and ten. Ridge, who has been the team's leading ball carrier, will tote the rock again, and away he goes. 13-yard gain to the outside. Andrew Ridge for the first down. I've been impressed with Ridge. He's fun to watch. He is a true football player. Not scared to get hit. Goes after it. Mario Pelaggi, number 88, makes the diving tackle for Ridge. And this is the sort of offense that we expected. Up and down the field here in the third quarter. At this rate, it seems like the team that makes the stop is going to be the one that takes the late lead. First and ten near midfield. Midway through the third quarter. Nick Rice, Jeff Gorham from Ramona High School in the city of Riverside. Ridge fakes the run and checks it down to his tight end for a gain of about five, maybe four on the play. Dominguez, but that's Eugene Jaquez who makes the catch. Freddy Carrillo shoves him out. Said that young man's name a lot tonight. Yes, absolutely. Both quarterbacks have had their moments. Rebels have won the turnover battle, which has been the difference, though, in the game. 1913. Three step drop. Ridge is going deep, and he had to backpedal to make the catch. It's complete in front of Barnett. On first down for it appeared to be Dominguez. Let's look at the replay and. No, there's the grab again by Gene Jaquez. 
number six. Good poise, though, from that quarterback in the pocket there. Andrew Ridge. Well, the Rebels are barely going into a huddle. This has been a breakneck drive for A.B. Miller. Do we know what the A.B. stands for? <laughs> Let me Google. Let me All Google right. that. I guess so. Just uh, just out of curiosity. The outside run, a good one from Isaac Granados, number fifteen. <laughs> Amy Miller out of Fontana, California, made the nice trek on the ninety-one. 15 freeway up there to, or rather down to Riverside, California. Second and seven. Ridge looks to his left and finds Stephen Thomas on the quick hitch route. And he gets hammered by way of the junior cover man, Jeremy Rodriguez, at the 25. Okay, here it is. A.B. Miller is named after Azriel Blanchard Miller. Azriel Blanchard. Uh, he lived from 18, uh, uh, he or she lived. Uh, from 1878 to 1941 and is created, credited as the founder of the city of Fontana. As the whole city of Fontana. In 1905, he brought 200 head of horse, mules, plows, and scrapers and tents into the area and be began transforming 17,000 acres of sand, sagebrush, and rock dun, into, dun, into dun. great citrus fruit, poultry, and livestock. So there you go. And... The breeding grounds for football. Dominguez to the 14. Clark makes the tackle. What, what's that guy, or what's that person's name? Azriel. Azriel. Here, here, you want to know some notable alumni? Please. Abe Alvarez. Embellish me. Former baseball player. Uh, Jesse Chavez, another baseball player. A pro football player, Alan Harper. Alan Harper. Kat Fondi, Fondi, is that her name? <laughs> the tattoo artist? Nick Barnett, who played for the Green Bay Packers and Washington Linebacker. Redskins. And, uh, yeah, just, that's about it. That's about it. Nick Barnett, maybe there's the next Bob, Nick Barnett here. Bobby Green, two-time uh, wrestler and UFC guy. Ridge throws short. And that tunnel screen is complete to the outside. It seems Andrew Ridge has discovered that the quick passing game is the best method of attack. And Luis Dominguez has been at the receiving end of quite a few of those. The historian Jeff Gorham. I'm looking up here at Arlington. Do you know where their notable alumni is? Oh, There's somebody man. playing right now. Lucas Duda plays for the New York Mets. Lucas Duda. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure plenty of great football players. Miller High School, as this jet sweep gains maybe a yard for Mario Hayward. And the local prep all-star game hosted in Fontana, they had eight of the players in the entire region from Miller High School. So we're learning about A.B. Miller as we go along here tonight. And the Rebels, I mean, if they were competing in, in a River Valley League, I mean, maybe they'd struggle against Ramona, but they sure look to be a team that's pretty formidable out of the Inland Empire. I don't believe the Nick, do you know? Well, here's a run near the goal line, a late signal. And Isaac Granados... Can you name the high school in Riverside that was named after the founder of Riverside? Oh, no. It's unrelated to RCC? I don't think Arthur. The, I don't think. Arthur Wheelock, not him? No. No. Okay. Um, oh, man. 
<laughs> it starts with a J. <laughs> it starts with a J. And there's a W in there, and then there's an N in there. Oh, man. Um, that two-point conversion for Miller is successful. Beautiful run to the outside from junior Mario Hayward. Um, hmm. John W. North, my friend. John W. North. I was going to say that. <laughs> sure. <Okay. laughs> that was a touchdown. I've been, I've been so entrenched with the trivia. John W. North. High and, school. of course, it would be. That is the founding high school in this. Now, there's been a lot of them, but this is that's the found, that's the first one, correct? No, it's not the first it's not one. Not the first one. Oh, Nick Rice, Riverside Poly, been around Riverside since 1887. Wow, my hands are sweaty. I know because <laughs> I put you on the spot. That's what I do every single time we work together. Yes, uh, Riverside Poly was the first high school. It was at it was at. The, where uh, RCC sits now. Okay. That was Riverside Poly High School. Yes, the whole entire quadrangle was Poly quadrangle. High School. Wow. Did not know that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Can you name the second oldest high school in Riverside? Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, hmm. Light blue and dark blue. That's your. That's your. Uh, Light blue and dark blue. Yeah. Okay. There's no way it's Ramona. Right? <laughs> yes, it's Ramona there's no, High School. There's no way. <laughs> yes, Ramona High School. 1958, I believe. No, it was. That had to be older than that. Yeah, come on. But yes, Ramona High School is the second oldest high school in Riverside. And now there's, oh, what a return! Here we go. One to beat as he gets past Gene Jaquez at the 50. Not a touchdown, but a brilliant run out of Jordan Clark. The safety and the return man for Arlington in a 12-point football game. A oh. run back of 51. Arlington High School. Arlington. They, uh, Arlington High School, let's go with some of their, their notables. They've okay. never won a CIF. Oh, actually, they've won two CIF Southern Section Championships, 1981 and 1990. Okay. They've had some great athletes. Chris Harper was a professional basketball player, was also a NCAA champion in the uh, long jump, and the he was a CIF champion in the long jump and high jump. Pam Alexander, who works at John W. North High School, was the shot put state champion in 1984. Interesting. They have had more CIF championships in wrestling than any school in Riverside history. Really? Correct. Something about that that school, huh? They have had more baseball championships than any team in Riverside, CIF championships. Dominic Johnson looks left into traffic, and that throw is batted down. Antenna for Clark knocked away by Adrian Root. Just off the fingertips of Jordan Clark. Well, you could look at an RCC roster, and quite a few of them are out of that JW North High School. Malik Walker, who's currently playing at Portland State football, was a former Husky. You know what a Husky yeah, is? Yeah. Yes, I sure do. <laughs> Big dog. You know, I looked at you kind of scared because for a second I was like, they're the Huskies, right? Yeah, they're the Huskies. Dominic Johnson inside of the 25. I'm under so much pressure over here at Riverside TV. Uh, it's so fun. You know, you would you would appreciate. I, most people would appreciate, you know, the knowledge I bring to the table. All right. I definitely do. I yeah. Mean, everyone here does. <laughs> oh, geez, that's a 16-yard game. Rebels up 26 to 13 late in the third quarter. Somebody's got to be the bigger person around here. You know? No. <laughs> First and ten. Incomplete on the throw from Dominic Johnson. 
First half flew by. Second, uh, third quarter here is lasting a long time. Got to credit the officiating crew, however, with the penalties, we've pretty much seen just about none. No, they've thrown the ball. It's going to be a late Thursday night football game here. All right. Second down and 10. Another run for Christian Bozeman, and that may gain a couple. So for all of those Dak Prescott jersey-wearing fans in attendance tonight, they may feel encouraged to see the Cowboys are up 29-28, but the Bucks are inside the red zone. They may be able to walk it off with a field goal. Terrific Tom. Man. Tom Brady's like my age. 42 years old. No, he's, he's older than Isn't he 44, I thought? He might be 44. I think he's like 44. I think he's in his 22 season, which is just insane. Sack. Stephen Thomas. And if you're Arlington, I mean, you're on that side of the field. I just. I'm sure Coach will see There's a little bit of wind out. at their back, yeah. I, I don't think they're going to go for the kick. I think they're going to try to go for try to get a first down here. Now that's what I'm talking about. New school football. Fourth and 13, you go for it. End of the third quarter, it's 26-13 in favor of Miller High School. 12 minutes remaining in the game. The Rebels offense went scoreless in the first quarter. Took advantage of three Lions turnovers over the next two periods. Arlington has... In that third quarter, executed the center to quarterback exchange. Now the final 12 minutes, the question is whether or not this comeback try is too little too late. Well, they're going to have to, you know, shore up that uh, center to quarterback and, and just make big plays. Play smart deep on defense, make some stops. You have 12 minutes left, probably two or three chances to score in here. Let's we'll see if Arlington can uh, capitalize. I mean, this has adjustment. to be the best. Uh, two touchdown deficit performance by a team. The Lions, if you scratch out those three turnovers inside your own 30. Yeah, it's an even game. Even or ball or game. they're leading. So uh, Arlington has to feel encouraged in that moment. But, of course, you know, the couple of turnovers, that's the difference in, in, in high school football. And we talk you know, we, about this every week. You know, the, the many victories you get as, a, you know, a new program. Yeah. And so, you know, you had problems, obviously, turning the ball over. Let's see if you can not do it here in the last 12 minutes when you're tired and, and feel like your back's up or against the wall. See if you can uh, recover here and make the adjustments. The rest of the River Valley League plays tomorrow or has a bye. Meanwhile, the Lions have a standalone on Thursday night. High snap for Dominic Johnson. He's looking to throw and fires towards the end zone. That pass is incomplete. Good look, though. Yeah. Mitchell Wood, the starting quarterback for today's game, number five, the intended target. Turnover on downs. There is a look at Mitchell Wood wearing the towel, the mouthpiece, the, uh, the arm, the short arm sleeve, elbow sleeve with the gloves. Got it all. Got it all. He's accessorized. Yes. Big time. Was that was that you back in the day? Were you wearing the headband and the elbow sleeves? <laughs> Are you kidding me? This hey, I have the most perfect face there is. I oh, had yeah? the full on face protector. I had yeah, I, I uh never was over accessorized. Never? No. I wanted people to see this <laughs> this face. See, come on. I had to just protect the face. Anything else if you see me walk, I walk like I'm in pain, but the face is Still, perfect. Perfect to this day. Ridge is going for it all in the first play of this drive. It's underthrown and picked off. Matthew Maloney, who caught the touchdown to put the Lions back in the game, records the huge Arlington interception. Yeah, great tracking by Maloney there. He knew it was coming at him, and it was a jump ball, went up and got it. Well, the Rebels have been aggressive in this fourth quarter, really throughout the second half, going for it on fourth downs 
And here the big play backfires on the throw from Ridge. Here's the Here's second look. Just underthrown, but look at Maloney. Great coverage all the way. Went out and knew it. Got it. Momentum changer here. How about that? A high school quarterback tossing one 50 yards. I probably couldn't have thrown it 15 yards in high school. Johnson with the handoff. And that was a throw from Uncle Rico, my friend. Yes. Napoleon Dynamite. I know your references, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Bozeman for a yard. Look, he's, he's going to Rico, gonna, that's the same type of delivery from that guy. That was, I'm telling you, man. He's going to throw it right over that mountain. Throwing it right over. Right into the bike. No, he's going to throw it right over Mount Rubido. That's a good one. Second and ten. Uh, this is an important drive for the Lions. Down two scores in the fourth quarter. Dominic Johnson has been the quarterback of choice for most of this second half. Speed option pitch to the outside for Warhop. Out of bounds just short of midfield. Raymond Warhop on the run. I've been impressed with Warhop. Warhop's been pretty darn good in this ball game. He's got a great feel for getting another, holes and, and running off guys. Another accessorized running back with the rubber pads on his elbows. They didn't do that back in the day, did they? No. No, no, no. We didn't have turf either. It's yeah. just so nice and easy for us nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, you youngsters. <laughs> but see, grass was better back then. Grass was wonderful. Another high snap. Just when they got that figured out in the third quarter, that's a loss of 12. Taken down by Jesse Rasura. And we're quick on the replay. Let's look at that snap. So how, as a coach, do you get that figured out? They knock it off. <laughs> Stop doing that. That's a that's a good message to say. Um, you practice it. You know what you do is you practice at home. Should they just decide to do under center the rest of this game? That could be an no, idea. No, you know it's preseason. Work on it. I Fair agree. Hey, just keep doing it. You're gonna get. You have to get better. By the way, we are having some ambient lightning right now. We'll see if there's any delays in the action. Knock on wood. Just saw one to the right, but there's a big wall right next to you, Jeff. So I missed the light. Yeah. No return man for the Rebels. A great punt. Fantastic punts. This one is down at the 10. That'll go down as a 57-yard punt. How about that? It's pretty darn good. 9-13 to play in the game. Rebels up 26-13, to and considering how uh, successful they have been running the ball. This could be an opportunity for them to try and begin to ice the game on this drive. We'll see if the Lions can snuff them out. Lions hold them back on defense. They have a shot. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Riverside teams in action. Looking forward to seeing Ramona High School again as yeah. they've been playing some great football and Coach Mashinsky and his Staff, my favorite guy, Frank Berber, the only coach I know that wears chunklas. Chunklas, what is that? You know, flip flops. That's the, right. Yeah, yeah. He, he's the only guy I know, and he he's around guys with cleats. Somebody's gonna step on his toes, but he does have Fred Flintstone toes, so he's okay. That works. We'll begin the drive on the ground in an effort to choose some clock here in the fourth quarter, and that's a nice run to the outside on the Mario Hayward scamper. Checking out the uh, RCC roster for the 2021 season. And Bud Burney, one of their listed quarterbacks, he is a freshman out of Riverside Pauley High School. Bud Burney, great basketball player as well. Oh, was he? Very good basketball player. And it's nice to see him on that roster over at RCC. Wheelock. Here's another second down run. Mario Hayward for a couple. So Riverside had to wait. Their first game of the season got canceled due to COVID out of Mount San Jacinto. So their season opener, yes, Cento. So their first game of the season will be this coming weekend. We'll have coverage of their home opener in just under two weeks. Eight days. 
Man, it's flying by. Eight days away. You and I will be there, my friend. Yes, very excited. But RCC brought in players, which is amazing. You would think as, obviously in high school, you're not out recruiting players from different states. But even at Riverside College, you can't, you know, like – you could offer a scholarship, but that's worth, like, what, maybe $50 a semester? Well, no, see, and here's here's something a lot of people, because, you know, I, I was the basketball coach at Riverside Community College or Riverside City College, whatever they call it these okay. days. Okay, yeah. And uh, the national JCs, which is everybody outside of California, can give scholarships. Really? So you can, you have, uh, you collect Pell Grant money, Cal Grant money, and, and the same kind of money that you would receive going to university, well, for your university, Outside of California, you can get your room and board paid for, uh, your books, and your tuition, and some extra money. In the that state works. of California, however, you cannot give scholarships because they are run separately. And they, it is the triple C-double-A. There you go, the yeah. triple C-double-A. But they do offer prior to registration, so, you know. Yeah, so if you if you do go to RCC and you're an athlete, then they usually, usually get the classes you want uh, right away. Leroy Orozco out of Notre Dame High School in Riverside. He's now a Tiger. Bryant Aquino, offensive lineman from Ramona, now with RCC as a freshman. And Ulysses Alberto, 6'4", freshman offensive guard from Riverside Poly, also a member of the Tigers. So congrats to those guys for making it to the next level. Donia Romain, I'm going to add one more player from Ramona High School. So there you go. Of course. There you go. Had to end on a... Dante Ram. Roby? Is that who that is? Roby? Was it Roby? No. It was some Lyman Donia Romaine. Jaden Johnson from JW North. I'll just write it all. I don't wanna we don't we don't segregate anyone here at our uh, uh, Riverside T V. I wanna know everybody from uh, <laughs> Riverside that's playing on RCC. Uh that's it. But I was it. going to say. Um, and the rest of them are probably from out of the country, out of the state. Exactly. I was going to say, what junior college other than RCC brings in guys from obviously the East Coast, but Hawaii. But that's um, what makes that. But that was what makes uh, RCC so good is that, you know, they're not given scholarships. Yes. These kids are coming. They're playing for a year or two years. And uh, Coach Kraft just brings the guys, brings the dudes. Utah and Louisiana and Georgia and Virginia, North Carolina. They have guys out of the country in the, uh, on the Usually. national championship. Yeah, on the yes. national championship team they did. Usually. I'm looking, and this year they decided to keep it in the country, I believe. Well, the Rebels, even with the injury, are marching up field and chewing up clock. Fourth play of this methodical drive. And Hayward on the stretch run is near the first down. It's close. Let's look at the official ruling here on the outside handoff. Jordan Clark was one of the first ones there on the tackle. Senior number eight. It appears he was just a bit short. It is amazing. I mean, there are quite a few NCAA schools that don't have the, the talent amount of that talent you, that RCC has. Yes. Second and two, under seven minutes to go in the game. Another run. Isaac Granados. First down, A.B. Miller. Gain of about a dozen on the play. But there are so many opportunities, though, for young high school football players to play just college football in the area. You have a great... Uh, set up at the University of Redlands, where I'm sure a lot of the Riverside kids have gone. Yeah. You have San Bernardino Valley College as well. Uh, and just Azusa Pacific down the road. There are some schools and opportunities for these guys to play at the four-year level and play on Saturdays. Hey, and Sundays for quite a few guys, like Nick Barnett. That's right. Yes. So with six and a half minutes left to go in the game, as a coaching staff for the Lions, are you giving up the deep ball in an effort to stop this run right here? Is that the game plan? Yeah, well, I think you almost have to because, because they're, they're going to just ground and pound and try to run this clock out. There's the early movement. Tyrone Freeman jumped early for Arlington. First and five. 
Well, A.B. Miller has employed three different running backs, and they all have picked up first downs. Phenomenal blocking up front. Mario Hayward on that run. Tackle from Arlington's Gregory McDaniel. Number 79. Well, I mentioned before the drive, the Rebels could begin to put it away. They most certainly would put it away if they score points on this possession. We'll see if they can pull it off up by 13 in the fourth quarter. Not a single pass on this drive. That's a three-yard gut run. After the Jesse Rasuri scramble, the fourth running back to tote the rock on this drive, the Rebels have used over four minutes on this phenomenal march. Second and seven, Rebels began this drive at their own 10. From the Arlington 39, it's second and seven. Outside for Granados, and he cuts to about the 28. Gain of 10 and a first down. Okay, who is the best NFL player out of Riverside? Do you have? Do you know any? Is the question. Hey, <laughs> JC Jackson's pretty good. I got to tell you that. Oh come on, man! Um, you, you think about. I want you to think. Let's let's go. Think long and hard. Okay. Long and hard. All right. You um, had. Oh, you know, we have to say because I love the kickers. Frank Corral, who played for the Rams when they went to the Super Bowl. Okay. Uh, Chris Claiborne, who played for the New York Giants, played at John W. North High School. Is he any relation to Calais Claiborne? No. Okay. How about that run? Kenyon Barner, who played at uh, Kenyon Notre Dame. Barner, He's how about three, that? He's a three-time Super Bowl champion. Yes. Played out at Notre Philadelphia Dame and uh, I think New England for yes, a couple of Yes, he did. Of yes, he did. Okay. What a run, by the way, before we continue. Number 13, Mario Hayward. Look at this replay. <laughs> He's getting carried it by was, his own that lineman. That was a scrum. That was like a... Shout out to Matthew Perez for keeping him on his feet. Sammy Knight, who played uh, at Rubido, played for New Orleans, Miami, uh, New York Giants. Great player. Some people think that he is the best of all time. I was just told that Rubido is not, but at one time it was. <laughs> I believe that Rubido now, I think it was announced the Harupa Valley. Hey, listen here, area. Jeff Gorham. you got to get your facts straight, all right? Uh, I'm sorry I mentioned Rubido. <laughs> oh, man. Damon what Morton. a moment. Damon Morton played in the NFL. Damon Morton. Now, obviously, one of the great basketball players of all time, Reggie Miller. Kawhi right. Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Bobby Bonds, Barry Bonds. Barry Baseball. Bonds? Yeah, ba ba wow. Bubba Franks played for, tight end for the Green Bay Packers. for an, Okay. They had some great ones. Alvin Davis, a baseball player. There's been a lot of baseball players. A lot of guys still playing baseball. But, yeah, I'm going to have to say uh, if we're going to vote. Okay. I'm going to have to go with um, – Okay, so I would say Sam, Sammy Hakeem Knight Akbar? is, is uh, uh, off the table, apparently. Sammy Knight's off the table. Hakeem Akbar. Hakeem Akbar, huh? Yep. Um, and had, uh, Dusty Baker, who's, you know, the, the great manager and was a great baseball player. Oh, the run to ice it. Touchdown, Mario Hayward. What a run, and the Rebels have put it away with o under four minutes to go. What a drive. They used four different running backs. We got through all the different Riverside stars, but it's Hayward who has had a very strong performance tonight that began the game with a big-time run and finishes this fourth-quarter drive of the touchdown. Yeah, Jake Marisnik, who plays now for the San Diego Padres. Austin Barnes plays for the Dodgers right now. Very nice. That would be, uh, yeah, Jake Marisnik was part of that Astros team that won the World Series. But did they win the World did Series they? is the question. Yes. But no, Jake Marisnik, 
his uh, grandfather was the longtime athletic director at La Sierra. Very interesting. Roger Folsom, who's in the Hall of Fame. The Riverside Sport Hall of Fame, I should say. To answer your question, um, I mean, Bubba Franks was pretty good. He's Super Bowl champion, tight yeah. end for the Packers. Yep. That, might be my, that might be my answer. Played at least 12, 13 years in the NFL. I know our guy Frank Corral is, is watching. He's going to tell me he was the best because, you know, he's a kicker. Yeah. And kickers are definitely people. We have seen quite a few good kicks tonight. 34, 13 Did Rebels. You say kickers are people? <laughs> kickers are people too? <laughs> They, they are people, too. Oh, man. Well, it's good seeing you, Nick it's Rice. It's good, good seeing you, it's fun, uh It's fun getting together with you calling these games. Another year of Riverside football. You know, we've we've hosted a couple of – I mean, since I've been here, you've, you've been around for a year or two to kind of get me acclimated to the ropes here at Riverside TV. We hosted a semifinal for the CIF State Championships. Back in 2019, Sacred Mary of Heart was the school that came into town to face a club out of, what was it? Uh, was it La Sierra who made it 2019? We covered one of them. So many different schools. <laughs> well, Ramona went to the CIF finals. Maybe it was Ramona who, who we were covering 2019. Sacred Mary of Heart was the school I remember because – See, Never heard of them. <laughs> see, at that time, it was deep in the season. I might have been. I think I was calling. A, a, I think I might have been out of the state calling hoops at that time. But yeah, it's always nice to have these Riverside teams that make it to a you know CIF finals championships. And I, you know, we've been so successful in m many sports. I mean, we've had great swimmers, yep. gold medal athletes, swimmers, baseball players. Like I said, still peppered throughout. Uh, Major League Baseball right now, a lot of guys still playing basketball. I mean, you have uh, multiple Hall of Famers with uh, men's and women's basketball. Absolutely. It, Reggie Miller might be the second best shooter of all time behind Steph. And he's probably the second best player in his family behind his sister Cheryl. Oh, I'm pretty sure that even Reggie would probably agree with that. It's up off to about the 26. Sergio Lopez of A.B. Miller makes the stop after the short throw. But we will be back two nights from now, back here in this exact same stadium. Yes, absolutely. As Martin Luther King is going to battle their longtime rival, Riverside Poly. Granddaddy of them all. It is. And the Rebels of A.B. Miller, they – have to be, I'm sure, of the teams you've seen this year among the most impressive. They came in tonight to Ramona, made the trip, and they really took it to them on the offensive end tonight. Excellent performance. Johnson's pass is into the hands of Christian, no, I'm sorry, Jordan Clark, gain of four. Yeah, if you're Arlington, you got to be happy. I mean, they're, they're heading in the right direction. All things are positive. You know, a couple miscues from center to quarterback, but overall they played a pretty solid football game. Arlington will try and notch a win in two weeks when they battle Canyon Springs. That's the other thing. Uh, Johnson going deep here, that's out of bounds. Quite a few schools by this point have had a bye week, maybe the extra seven days, actually the extra eight days since this is Thursday, will give them an opportunity to regroup. Maybe they get the center quarterback exchange down and they'll be looking like a totally different team in 15 days against Canyon Springs. Yeah, I mean, there's been uh, no no major injuries as we've seen. So if you're the head coach at Arlington. Kevin Argumosa. Great guy. Met him this week, and we have a lot of mutual friends and a lot of mutual respect for that man. A lot of coaches called me this week after the coach's perspective and said how happy they were that he got the job at Arlington and, yeah. and said, hey, he's going to do a great job there. Jeffrey Roney, a former River Valley champion in 2014 at nearby La Sierra, was with the team at Arlington until just recently. And from the looks of a lot of these coaches in Riverside, they get out of the sport. They have that huge itch, not Jeff Gorham, but everybody else gets that itch, and they want to come right back to coaching. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I love the fact that co- high school fo- football and basketball and, and just coaches in general, you know, they do it because they, they have a, a love for the student athlete, the students yes. that they have. And, you know, I, I think the world of coaches, I think they mold and help people as they grow older. They're, they're mature. They learn how to handle themselves at, in a work, uh, workforce. They know how to go to – they decide to go to college. And I think coaches are a big, big part of that. I just never want to do it again <laughs> because it's it's just it's too much, and I'll no. be honest, it's just it's a hard job. And I tip my cap off to all the coaches, the assistant coaches, everybody involved. They do such a great job. No, you'd rather ask uh, little kids like me what president was alive during a particular of course, era. Of all course. right, that that seems like more fun to you. And I avoided that whole conversation tonight. I am very happy about that. Uh, the game's over. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to the president talk tonight. Next week or uh, next time we you were here, we're going to get you. 23rd, huh? Who is it? 23rd, 23rd president of the United States. Our our, uh, our our van out back is. is uh, um, I'm going to take a wild guess because it's just the first that comes in my head. Carter. J- Jimmy, Jimmy Carter. Carter. Was that no. 23? No. Dang it. No. Ah, jeez. Harrison, Harrison, my friend. Harrison. Okay. All right. Woo, we have Benjamin one play Har- left in the Benjamin game. Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin Harrison didn't even get his first name right. All right, the final run of the game, Damian Herrera Lopez, the junior quarterback. And that'll do it. A.B. Miller High School comes into Ramona and notches their second straight win. In as many weeks, Rebels 34 and the Lions 13. Fantastic performance tonight by head coach of the Rebels, Andrew Amosa, and the school that had a winning record in 2019. COVID shortened three-game schedule in 2020, and they're back on the winning ledger at 2-1 and one this year. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to uh, watching this Arlington team grow, especially in their uh, first-year head coach. They're, doing a gr- they're gonna be fine. I'll tell you, they're gonna, they're gonna cause a, a couple ripples in the River Valley League and I'll tell you what, these these football players need to hold their heads up high because we're going to see them later on this season, and they are just going to improve more so every week. Uh, player of the game, two-way stud, senior wideout and cornerback, Matthew Maloney, number six for the Arlington Lions, was spectacular. He scored a receiving touchdown. He picked off a pass from Andrew Ridge and was excellent for the Lions, but Arlington falls short by the final of 34-13. to For Jeff Gorm and the rest of our crew, I am Nick Rice. So long from Ramona High School in Riverside as the Rebels win the game 34-13. to This has been another presentation of Riverside High School football on Riverside TV.